MMA stormed the fighting scene in the early 90s, and it was initially really just a showcase of individual martial arts, with results varying with each style of fighting. However, as time has gone on, the sport has evolved tremendously. Now there are more rules, competition, and overall different aspects compared to back then. There are, as well, some important things to take into consideration when developing a fight in the MMA, and a big part of that involves the fighters themselves, as they play a big role when putting together a match. So, in today's video, we'll be discussing some of the important aspects when developing an MMA fight as well as what it takes to compete in them. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. MMA is, for the most part, a sport divided by distinct ranks. Amateur fighters wage war through local circuits in hopes of making a professional bout. With enough perseverance and dedication, some even manage to secure a position in the next exalted roster of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and a few elite surge past the competition and claim gold and glory. So what does it take to become a successful MMA fighter and even possibly claim the gold in glory? Well, to start off, tactics and technique are quite important components. As a matter of fact, fights can be won or lost on the basis of one combatant taking a superior edge over the other. This can be done utilizing strategies such as striking, takedowns, grappling, and more. With that said, it's easy to see why professional athletes must train multiple times a day across various disciplines. Today, it's a rarity to find a successful MMA fighter that does not cross-train style in order to build a complete arsenal. Some of the most popular core styles studied in mixed martial arts include boxing, Muay Thai, wrestling, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which, speaking of, the variety of different fighting styles has led to the argument of what exactly is the most effective one for MMA. Speaking on the first and probably one of the most popular styles, boxing. Boxing is perhaps the most famous fighting style that people often see as the purest form of fighting. When it comes to MMA, some people think boxing is not useful as it includes only hand strikes. What they do not know, however, is that there are many reasons why boxing is also known as the sweet science. No other fighting style will ever teach you how to punch and move like boxing will. One of the best things MMA fighters can learn from boxing is footwork. All boxers have great footwork because they have to keep the distance, stay out of trouble, or attack the rival. No matter if it is boxing or MMA fighting, good footwork skills can make a ton of difference. Further, boxing teaches you really good head movement, which is crucial for MMA. Head movement allows you to avoid strikes, create angles, and counter the opponent's attack. And let's not forget how some simple punches like the jab can help a fighter keep the distance or set up punches. Just ask the former UFC and boxing champ Holly Holm how it's done. Some of the best MMA fighters actually have a strong background in boxing. Of course, we're speaking about the big stars like Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz, and Cody Garbrandt. Another style that's argued as one of the most effective styles of fighting is Mai Tai. Thai boxing is a martial art with perhaps the highest damage per strike ratio, also known as the art of eight limbs. Mai Tai teaches you how to use all your limbs to deliver powerful strikes. This includes vicious elbows and knees in the clinch, as well as hard kicks. These strikes can do much damage, especially the elbows that can produce nasty cuts. Further, MMA fighters can also lock their hands around their rival's head and unload with vicious knees to the body. Yet, the most useful Muay Thai techniques are, of course, notorious kicks. As Muay Thai masters in the MMA, like Eddie Barbosa, usually focus just on chopping your legs until you can't stand anymore. And this can be seen when he destroyed Dan Hooker in their bout at UFC, which was pretty painful to watch. Muay Thai is a great base for MMA as well. Many saw lots of roots in great Thai fighters making a transition and enjoying great success. We dare to go even further, saying that this is the most important fighting style in the modern MMA when it comes to striking. The next commonly used style in fighting is wrestling, which is actually one of the oldest sports in the world that consists of various takedowns, holds, throws, and many other useful techniques. It also includes a method of hard training and top wrestlers who are perhaps the toughest people on the planet. For many fans and pros, wrestling is the best fighting style for MMA, or at least very close to receiving that title. Though this stays open to debate, we can't escape the fact that wrestlers are ruling the modern competition. It's by far the most useful fighting style, and here's why. Wrestlers are experts in bringing the fight to the ground and setting up a strong top position. And this is crucial for MMA as it allows you to take total control over the fight and the rival on the bottom. Some great wrestlers can hold their rivals on the ground for the entire fight with ease. And this is very important when it comes to how judging works in the MMA as well. Further, wrestling also matches well against some other styles like Muay Thai, as their kicks simply don't work because wrestlers can easily catch or time their kicks and bring them down. Among the list of styles of fighting that are debated as being most effective is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. BJJ is a grappling martial art that is arguably one of the most useful tools you can use when the fight goes to the ground. Once the fight hits the ground, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters use various chokeholds and joint locks to submit the rival or defend. The entire concept behind BJJ is major. 
amazing, as it allows you to fight and defeat much bigger rivals. So it's not surprising that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu legend Royce Gracie dominated the MMA scene during the early days when there were no rules or even weight classes. From UFC 1 to UFC 5, Royce used Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu techniques to defeat rivals who were much bigger than him. Royce put BJJ on the map, and he established it as one of the MMA basics. Today, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu still plays a key role in modern competition, just can't expect to succeed without it. Sooner or later, the lack of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu will backfire on you. There have been many world-class Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters in MMA like Damian Maia or Gilbert Burns. These fighters are simply amazing to watch as they only need to grab a single part of your body to place the submission. And in modern MMA, it's very hard fighter who doesn't have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills, or at least doesn't attend the classes. Although having training or some type of experience in different styles of fighting is important for MMA fights, there are also many other aspects that can make a fighter great. The first being endurance. A professional MMA contest can typically take place over the space of 15 to 25 action-packed minutes, and each round consists of a standardized block of 5 minutes, with 60 seconds allowed for rest. Throughout the bout, athletes will undergo periods of intense activity separated by sections of active recovery. Fighting is neither a sprint nor a marathon. It's very interval in nature, meaning fighters must excel in both explosive energy recall and recovery. Fights can be won and lost simply on endurance alone. Elite-level fighters should always have the gas tank to be able to push the pace until the final bell. Occasionally, an early stoppage cannot always be achieved, which requires a combatant to last the entire duration. Therefore, due to the explosive nature of the required movements and extensive round duration, fighters must be able to call upon multiple energy systems. Fighters must have the strength to lift, carry, or overpower an opponent at any point during the bout. Although technique is always important, incredible strength can never be underestimated. Many a technical, successful MMA fighter has found themselves out-muscled once fatigued or trapped. Everything from grip to leg strength can play an important role in victory or defeat. Alongside conditioning, every high-level competitor takes part in some kind of strength-building program. This is because studies have shown that increases in strength and power can improve athletic performance in sports involving high-velocity activity. Strength forms the foundation of an athlete's power and is an important factor in developing greater overall velocities. The fighter with a greater level of power should, in theory, be able to control the distance and deliver more effective blows. For example, a fighter with inferior power will find it increasingly difficult to put a more powerful opponent down. But, as we have already mentioned, endurance plays a massive role in keeping a powerful athlete effective. Just like an engine with an empty gas tank, all the power will be lost if a fatigued fighter runs out of fuel. Therefore, it's important that successful MMA fighters can consistently deliver powerful movements round after round. Aside from the physical traits that make a great fighter, having a good mentality and mental toughness is important as well. In order to make it amongst the greatest mixed martial arts fighters, uh, must prove a mind of steel. They must be able to push through pain barriers, self-motivate themselves, and remain calm under extreme pressure. According to sources, athletes, coaches, and applied sports psychologists have consistently referred to mental toughness as one of the most important psychological characteristics related to outcomes and success in elite sport. Just like the physiological traits, mental toughness can be both genetic and developed. Multiple division champion George St. Pierre, for example, works with a sports psychologist. In the world of elite MMA, hiring a mental coach is becoming increasingly popular. Even the best feel the fear, stress, and anxiety of a big night fight. But the truly elite have developed methods of how to handle these sensations effectively. Three important psychological traits that contribute toward mental toughness include motivation, self-belief, and high pain tolerance. All of these traits are arguably as important as the physical traits, because while some may be able to do something physically, they won't be able to succeed without the right mentality and strength. With that said, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.